then they're going to be frustrated and say, shoot, I just spent $20,000 and I spent 50 grand to park my vehicle and I only generated X number of leads that made this much money. And then you may decide to back out. Now you just wasted 70 grand. So I would really, if you're going to do it, really think about the investment and the amount of time that it's going to take. And versus if you use those same funds, in your current structure, maybe there's some other options. I don't want to scare you. I think shop I know is a great business, but I do want to scare you because you know I'll take less if you do it yourself. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's you got to <coughs> think in the realms of hundreds of thousands of dollars, not millions of dollars, to really do it the right way. You can't think of it in tens of thousands. It's not if you're gonna you know. Again, it depends on the model, right? I mean, I think our models our our models is a bit different uh, than Jason's. So it depends on the model you're trying to get to, but um, it's it's just, you have to if you're going to again it, it's you're just throwing money away if you don't go all in. I think that's what Jason said. Yeah. It's definitely doable, but like I said, it's, it's, been, yeah. it's definitely doable. You know, the, the model works. You can see it out there. There's companies that succeed, that greatly succeed in. Um, and listen, shopping home companies aren't necessarily successful in brick and mortar. I mean, when I was at Empire, we bought, I bought a load of flooring, right? And they had five retail stores in Chicago, including Shop at Home, and, uh, which made us interested in, in, uh, in retail, but you, know, you never, you know, Empire, we tested a couple of retail stores, but it kind of stopped there. You know, it was just, we weren't, we couldn't be great at retail. You know, people that are great at retail aren't necessarily great at Shop at Home, and I kind of believe in, do what you're great at. I think for, for us, because I mean, you guys already had a reputation for 50 plus years with us and came out of nowhere. You know, I couldn't scale my business past the you know five to seven million dollar year range until I had the brick and mortar. When I got the brick and mortar, that gave me credibility. You know, because if otherwise I was just some guy trunk slam working on the back of my vehicle. You know, when they saw this big building, we were just renting at the time. You know, they see that they they all oh, okay, they're real credible. Because now everyone in the front is on now I got the shop at home business and they have a picture of you know some distributors you know racks and, and you know they will have the basement. So how does Mrs. Jones or Mr. Jones uh, differentiate who's real and who's not? Who's, who's gonna be there beyond the, the 30 minute 30 detail I want to? Great point. I want to throw some else off John. All right. The other thing that you have to think about, this is especially true for the independent who's gonna have shop at home to a brick and mortar. When you sell a job now, who is the person that goes out and measures and does the site assess, right? So when you're doing shop at home, that is the person who's doing the measure and the site assess. So they have to be properly trained as well, or else you're gonna sell a job at a nice margin, and then you go out and replace that job, lose all that margin, because the salesperson didn't know how to do the job correctly, which is why a lot of people, when they start a shop at home, just stick with carpet. It's a lot, it's easier to site assess carpet than versus hard surface where you can really mess up a job really bad and you don't know what you're doing. And a lot of you, you, know, you talk about how much better you are than your competition because you do all these things well. The reality is, it's not that hard to be better than an empire. It isn't. So you can get into it, you can build a much higher reputation, but you have to have the right people with the right training to do it. You still gotta spend a ton of money on advertising though. That's awesome. So listen. I would love for you guys just to open up questions to these guys. It doesn't have to be about shop at home, um, even though we're talking about that. But I can open up questions to the panel here. Have you, uh, Jason, have you thought about offering AFSU to outside companies? Oh, we got the green, we got the green cube. Yeah. I heard the question was, would I consider offering AFSU to outside companies? Uh, the thought has crossed my mind, but the, look, I view AFSU as a huge competitive advantage against all of you. I have the ability to do it if you don't. I mean, it's really that simple. So, um, I would not. And the only reason is it's not worth the recurrent revenue that maybe I charge you to get it. Number one, but number two is all the content that's in AFSU is not mine. So to resell it, I can't do it. Like, I can't charge you, I can do it, I would sue. I would have to recreate all new content. So. All we've done is we've taken a bunch of other content, right? So um, Shaw has great content, right? Artex has great content, right? You, when the pandemic hit, think of all the online training that was offered. Well, if you curate, take all those things and you scour the internet, we do this, and then we we watch tons of videos, and then we, we take it, we made our own book. 
the answer is, uh, and I don't normally tell people no, but in this case, we would not. We would not have. Sorry. I buy you, mate. <laughs> and you get to use it for free. That's all right. <laughs> My question is to Jason. Oh, just sort of working, yeah. um, it seems to me that there's a lot of um, synergy in your retail operation and your, um, your shopping mall um, stores that a lot of it is overlapping. What you have is several channels where you sell. The internet, home, and shop and, and, and retail. It seems to me that in these times, you have the perfect model. It's, it, it's like your timing is, is perfect. And my husband has a retail store. Um, he also already has a lot of channels in place that bring him business into the retail store. So it seems to me that synergy is there if he just goes into, home, into shop at home because so much of it's already in place. It's sort of like an extension of what he already does. <laughs> um, look, I agree with your assessment. We also do wholesale, we also do property management, we also do builder, we also do commercial. So we're the true hybrid that does it all. We do, um, you know, my retail division is probably bigger than almost everyone's store here with the exception of these two, just my retail. So we do it, we do it well with each unit, each one of those segments really operates separately. The builder doesn't operate the way retail does, kind of like what Steve said. Shop at home operates different. That brick and mortar. Now we found a way to kind of make the two work together, but I can tell you with what's happening in the industry right now, with the supply chain issues, with pricing constantly going up, if you're strictly a builder, which I doubt any of you are, and you're getting you're getting your ass kicked right now, right? You get killed. I was just at the FBI convention and talking to some dealers who only do builder. You know, some of those guys, their margins are down five, six points for the year. That's huge. Like that could be their entire profit. A guy like me, yeah, my builder stuff is down, but everything else is not. So even though we're making less profit on builder, we made it up, so we're actually gonna end up making more money this year. Uh, but it's it's really smart to be diversified. It's also really smart to focus on just one thing and be the best at it too. So it's well, what you want. I can tell you it's extremely difficult to run all those different divisions. It'd be a lot easier to just run shop at home and focus on that. But it's the way we want to do our company. The reason, the reason why I brought that up is um, I, I'm a clothing designer and I sell a lot of large retail chains. Um, and one of the retail chains that I do sell is Express. And they have a new CFO, and that CFO is looking at every type of omni-channel that he can use to sell them and trying to change his business model. And the business model is basically what you have. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and, you know, what, what Todd said yesterday is open, is open statement of his grandma, his 80 year old grandma, saying, you know, when you look back at your life when you're 80 years old, will you have these regrets? You know, so I, I guess my biggest piece of advice for anybody would be do what you're passionate about. You know, I mean, we can't buy time back, no matter how much money you ever make. You know, at the very end, we can never put a pause button on time, we can never buy any minute back. So if you find something you're absolutely passionate, if you're passionate with brick and mortar, go at it 100%. If you're passionate with shopping, go at it 100%. You know, you know, dive in. Um, I know that for me, I, I, I want to work my butt off for a little more, you know, a little bit longer, but then I want to spend the rest of my life enjoying the time. You know, I don't want to work till I'm eight. You know, so you know, I, I think that you know that was the one thing that she that she said was one of her regrets. Is, you know, and, and also the, the gentleman in the keynote this morning was was you know the only possible regret would be how that time was. So, I think I think if you're going to start something, know what you want in the end. Yeah. What, what is the goal? Start, why are you, Why are you doing it? Right. What, what are you hoping to achieve at the end of it? Or else you're just kind of fluttering around. All right, as this is said, I have ten seconds here. Mm -hmm. If we can answer this in ten seconds, question: um, How do you justify having um, subcontractors and training them? Because one of the one of the um, tenants of an employee. So, uh, I don't want me to take that sentence. The accountant may want to answer that question. So, there's a specific uh, regulation within the IRS code 3508 that allows you to treat these people as direct sellers. Direct seller is a hybrid, an independent contractor, and an employee allows you to have some control, but also puts them in this bucket that you can 
1099 then and pay 100% commission. So a realtor. Yeah, it's the same thing as a realtor. So you know, there there actually is legal protection when you talk about um, salespeople, in-home salespeople, that uh, allows you to do what you want, and it's the IRS that tells us that, which uh, is what we're all scared of. So. Your, uh, your best friend is 3508 in the IRS code. It should, and it should be part of your agreements with your, your specific language. You assume you have contracts with them. And if you've got any questions about this, I'm happy to talk to you about it. But um, there is a specific structure you have to set up that creates protection for you that you don't have to worry about that. That's all the time we have. These guys are going to be here. So if anybody else has questions, they're going to be readily available. Thank you so much for your time. <laughs> we had a bunch of people that wanted to ask a bunch of follow-up questions for several of the sessions. So myself and Nick Bach, maybe Steve and Joey, but whoever, we'll be back at 5.15 just to answer questions since we keep running out of time for anyone who wants to, wants to come back and ask questions. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. a lot. Thank Perfect. You. Thank you.